We are called to go. We are called to serve. We are called to share God's love. Hi, I'm Mignon Fowler. I'm the Director of Missions and Outreach at Buncombe Street. This year, we can't physically go, but I'm so excited to tell you about Haiti at Home. We partnered with Mission of Hope to bring you the first ever at-home mission trip. It's a seven-day virtual experience designed for all ages. Mission of Hope Haiti is an amazing organization that was founded in 1998. Their whole philosophy is to empower the local community. They want to sustainably transform the lives of every man, woman, and child. And they do this through education, nutrition, food distribution, church advancement, work programs, medical, I could go on and on. What does an at-home mission trip look like? Each day, you'll be given a link in your inbox to start your journey. You can do this completely on your own timeline. Each day, we'll focus on an area that Mission of Hope works in to empower the local community. Gather with your family to learn about another way of life and to see what a mission trip is like. Pray, serve, and share God's love with a country 1,200 miles away without ever leaving your home. Join us July 19th through 25th for Haiti at Home. Go to the Missions website now to reserve your spot. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. My friends, it is my privilege to welcome you back to the Trinity Campus for worship. We've got some exciting news that we've got for you today. The first thing I want to point out is we're going to throw it to a video of two new clergy that we are so excited to receive in, into Buncombe Street United Methodist Church. So join me as we watch this video and welcome Brian and Karen. Hello. I'm Chris Floyd, and I'm here today on behalf of the Staff Parish Relations Committee to restart an exciting new chapter at Buckley Street. With me are two new ministers who started this week. We have Reverend Karen Jones, who is our new Associate Minister of Christian Education. We have Reverend Ryan Gilmer, our new Senior Minister. We'd like them to take our opportunity to introduce themselves to the families around the Reverend Jones. Hi, I'm Pastor Karen Jones. I'm the new Associate Minister of Christian Education. This is my husband, Ian, who is also an ordained minister. And this is Layla, five months old, and Thomas, two and a half. Thomas, come say hi. We're so excited to be here at Buncombe Street and part of you in ministry. Hello, Buncombe Street Church. I am uh, Brian Gilmer, I'm your senior pastor. This is my wife, Jennifer, and my daughter, Bryson. We are excited to be part of the Buncombe Street Church family. We're excited about what God's going to do here. We're excited to get to know you. We hope you get to see everyone soon. Guys, we're so happy to have them here. Both of them so highly recommended by the conference. They're they're just very talented, godly people, and they're just doing great things for our church. Highly recommend if you have the opportunity, please reach out to them. Send them an email, give them a phone call, just let them know how happy you are that they're here. Also, we're just going to do great works for Buffalo Street. We pray God's blessing on Brian and Karen and their family as they come into the Buncombe Street family. Another announcement I want to bring to your attention is worship is going to look just a little bit different for the next few weeks. So you can still tune in to whichever worship video you like the most, uh, but know that the sermon is going to be the same for all three services so we get a chance to meet our new senior pastor. My friends, there's that and so much more going on in the life of the church. I hope that you are subscribing to our daily devotional emails, that you are getting our e-blast each week, which is our digital newsletter, that you are checking out what's going on on our website. If you have any questions about things going on in the life of Buncombe Street, wh wh whether you're a longtime member or a first-time worshiper with us, any questions you have, you can email David Stubbs. His email is on the screen, and he will make sure whoever has the best answer to your question gets in touch with you. But for now, my friends, will you join me in prayer? Father, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the ability we have to, to watch this video and to worship you because we know you are so big, Lord, that you can bind us through your Holy Spirit. Even though we are separated from each other in different places at different times, worshiping you, Father, through your Spirit, make us one with each other and one with you. 
Enable us to worship you in spirit and in truth. We love you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Will you pray with me? Father, we come before you in prayer this day, and first we lift up to you the new clergy that we have and their families as they transition from other places and get settled in Greenville. We pray that they feel welcomed and empowered to help lead your church here at Buncombe Street. Father, these are peculiar times, and we can't receive these new leaders the way we would normally want to, so we pray that they feel the warm embrace of this congregation. Father, we also pray for everybody impacted by COVID-19, both with the disease and their health, as well as the economic impact that it is having on our lives. Father, we pray for your guidance and how we can best navigate these uncertain times in this pandemic. Father, we also lift up to you the, the names of people who we are carrying on our heart this day, who are struggling with illnesses, who are struggling with grief, who are struggling with life choices, who are struggling with the faith who are struggling with mental illness, who are struggling with so many things. So, Father, hear us now as we lift to you the names of the individuals we are holding in prayer this day, either silently on our hearts or aloud on our lips.
Father, it is in your mercy that you hear our prayers, and we pray that you will continue to hear us as we join with one voice to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. gospel lesson for this morning comes from Matthew's gospel, the 14th chapter. And this morning I want to share with you verses 22 through 33. Matthew writes, immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When everyone came, when evening came, he was there alone. But by the time the boat had been battered by the waves and it was far away from land, for the wind was against them, and early in the morning he came walking towards them on the sea, but the disciples saw him walking on the sea, and they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. 
and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began sinking. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and called in, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O God, open our hearts and our minds by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that as your word is proclaimed on this day, we would receive it with joy. Amen. Good morning, Buncombe Street Church. Whether you're worshiping with us at the downtown traditional service or the table service or at the Trinity campus of Buncombe Street Church, we welcome you this morning. My family and I, along with Reverend Karen Jones and her family, are excited to be with you. And we look forward to being able to do ministry with you and hopefully even get to meet many of you soon. Over the next couple of weeks, I have the privilege of bringing the message from hopefully the different spaces around Buncombe Street where we worship. And those messages will be recorded and inserted into the regular service format so that you will be able to worship at your favorite service, seeing the same message across all three worship platforms. This morning, I want to invite you to begin by imagining with me I want you to imagine that it's around four in the morning and it's very dark. And for whatever reason, you and your friends have decided to take a rowboat out on the lake. And, and everything's going well. The, 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 the lake is calm. Uh, the wind's not blowing. You're enjoying your time with your friends. And then all of a sudden, the wind begins to pick up and it begins to blow. And it begins to blow harder and harder. And all of a sudden, you find yourself in the midst of the storm. And the waves are, are, are tossing your boat back and forth. And if that wasn't enough, all of a sudden you kind of look towards the shore and you see this image walking towards you and you would swear that it was a ghost. Now, if you find yourself in that situation, what do you think you would do? How many of you would begin to row as fast as you could and try to get away from whatever that figure was coming to you back to shore back to safety how many of you might even jump into the water and begin to swim frantically uh, away from the storm away from this figure how many of you would just sit there frozen in fear paralyzed by what's happening around you i know what i would do I would be part of the group that probably just sat there and was paralyzed with fear and terror at what was going on all around me. And if probably we're honest with ourselves, most of us, at least for a few seconds, would do the same thing. You see, we don't like to be out of control. We don't like unknowns. We don't like the what-ifs of life. We like to be safe and secure in our predictable comfort zones. And there's nothing totally wrong with comfort zones. It's good to have that place where you're feeling safe and you're still feeling secure. But on the flip side, sometimes when we stay in our comfort zones for too long, we, we miss opportunities. We miss opportunities to improve our lives and, and the lives of those around us. If we stay in our comfort zones for too long, we, we find ourselves sitting right there in the boat, paralyzed by fear, not taking action or doing anything of any value. In our Gospel lesson today, we, we find words of comfort of how we should move out of this comfort zone that sometimes we find ourselves in. In our Gospel lesson, Jesus and the disciples have been busy doing ministry. Jesus has been preaching and teaching and the disciples have been going around with Him. They've been sharing the good news. In the passage right before the one I just read, we find that Jesus and the disciples feed 5,000 people with a couple of fish and some bread. 
Now, I'm sure that they were tired. I'm sure that they were in need of some rest, especially Jesus. So he, he puts the disciples on a boat, and he finishes up with the crowd, and he probably tells the disciples, hey, you guys go ahead across the lake. Go get some rest. I'll, I'll catch up with you later. Jesus himself just needs to be alone. He, he needs time to, to refuel and reconnect with God. And so in our gospel lesson, we find the disciples in the exact scenario that I just ask you to imagine yourself in. It's the middle of the night. They're in the middle of the lake. It's dark. The wind begins to blow. A storm rolls in. The waves begin to toss their boat back and forth. And then all of a sudden, as they look towards the shore, they think they see a ghost. Now, Scripture says that they were not only afraid. Scripture says that they were terrified. And who wouldn't be terrified? With all that's going on around them. But then in the midst of their fear, in the midst of their terror, Jesus shows up. And when Jesus shows up, things always change. Immediately, Jesus says three things to them. He says, take courage. He says, it is I. And he says, don't be afraid. I'm sure that the disciples had all kinds of feelings and emotions going on inside of them. But it was Peter. It seems to always be Peter. Who is the one to speak up and say something? And in the midst of his emotion, in the midst of all the feelings, he says, Lord, if that's really you out there, let me come to you on the water. Jesus replies back, come ahead. Come on to me. P Peter gets the green light. It's not in the Scripture, but I, I have to think that it's at that point that Peter stands up in the boat and takes a big gulp. And now you all have experienced times in your life where you take a big gulp. Maybe you're standing in front of a crowd of people. Maybe you're being called to do something that you're not comfortable with or that is scaring you. I will be honest and tell you, I took a big gulp just a few minutes ago as I stood up to, to stand before you to preach. But Peter takes that big gulp. And in taking that big gulp, it's almost as if he's conjuring up all the, the, the strength he needs to do what's before him. And he takes that big gulp, and probably in his mind, he says, here I go. Sink or swim, I'm going out towards Jesus. And Peter grabs the, the sides of the boat, and he, he probably puts one foot over, and the water's probably spraying him in the face, and the boat's probably pitching up and down, still hanging on to the boat. He, he probably throws the other foot over, and now his knuckles are probably wide. His both feet are in the water, and he's hanging on for dear life. The other disciples are probably wondering what's going to happen. You, you, you think he's going to be able to let go? Or is he too afraid? Is he going to stay here? And then in spite of everything, in spite of the fear, in spite of the terror, he lets go. And Peter finds out how incredible the works of God can be. Now for us, Sometimes we know exactly what God is calling us to do, what God wants us to do, yet we find ourselves like those disciples were early on in the Scripture, unable to move, not willing to get out of our comfort zones. We say, yes, I, I know what you're calling me to do, O oh God, but, but what if? What if I fail? What if it doesn't work out? What if... I'm not understanding you correctly. What if you've got the wrong person? What if I sink? It's in those times that we can look to Peter for help. Because Peter teaches us in those what if times, in those times that we're called to get out of our comfort zone, he calls us, he teaches us to take that big gulp and go. Take that big gulp of faith and go. Hear those words from Jesus. Come ahead, take courage. It is I, do not be afraid. I don't know about you, but over the last four or five months, maybe even since the beginning of the year, I've had those moments where I've had to take a big gulp and just say, let's go. All of us have had our worlds turned upside down personally, in our work life, in our church life. But because of the, 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 the virus that is out there, Nothing is the same anymore. Nothing is normal. And we've been taken out of our comfort zones. But the good news of the day is this. When we're called to come out of our comfort zones, 
called to take that big gulp of faith and go. And we're not called to go alone. For we know that when we step out on faith, when we take that step out of the comfort zone, that God is right there. That Christ Jesus is going to be there. And as long as we keep our focus on Him, everything is going to work out. So I wonder today, what is God calling you to do? Where is God calling you? Is He calling you out of your comfort zone? Is He calling you to a new challenge, a new ministry, a new season of life? If so, then I encourage you to follow Peter's lead. Take a big gulp of faith. Keep your eyes focused on Christ and go. Almighty God, we come and we give you thanks for this day, this time that we can come together and worship. Lord, we thank you for your word as it speaks to us today. We thank you for the example that Peter gives us. Lord, when we find ourselves being called out of what is normal, what is our comfort zone, what is safe and secure, Lord, that... We know that you give us the strength to take that big gulp and to go. We know, Lord, that when we keep our eyes focused on you, when we keep our faith strong in you, that you are going to lead us to whatever it is and wherever it is that you're calling. So, God, today we ask that you would give us the strength to take that big gulp of faith and go wherever it is that you're calling us to go. We ask all this. In the name of your son, Jesus, and it's in his name we pray. Amen. A creed is a statement of what we believe. Let us now proclaim what we believe by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Go now with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit with you all now and forever. Amen.
Will you receive now this closing blessing? May God's grace be with you, watching over you, protecting you, and keeping you safe. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen and amen.